Hey folks, Carl here from the RO Bucket. Uh, today I just want to give you a little walkthrough of our new single post system, um, mainly how to set it up and how to use it, and uh, you know the different functionalities of it. So uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get started um, and show you guys where the inlet strainer is and how to plumb your intake side, and then we'll look at the outlets and how to uh, get it adjusted and uh, you know do a single pass through and how to also set the recirculation if you want to concentrate to a higher uh, sugar concentration like eight bricks in a single pass. So we'll talk a little bit about that as well. Our half inch outer diameter uh, high density polyethylene tubing snugly in, into that. This is our intake hose. We're going to place this into the sap that we want to concentrate. Now you could hook this to a plumb it directly to a bulk tank I'm um, using you know various fittings that we offer on our website. A lot of times people will go from either a half inch NTP or a three quarter inch NTP. So if you get to that, we can usually get you a, um, a push connect that'll, that, that'll insert this right into your tank. You can also draw from a barrel or from you know, other tanks like that. The only downside to that is these pumps are extremely, it's, ex it's extremely important you don't let these pumps run dry. So you're probably less likely to have it run dry if you're plumbed directly to a tank than if you're submersing the hose into a, into a barrel because the hose could either flow or you know they don't hold as much volume so you could run into some issues there. So you just want to be careful that you never let this pump run dry. So we're going to go ahead and put this into our uh, sap we're going to concentrate. For this demonstration we're just using, uh, we're just going to use water um, but uh, obviously it will uh, it'll serve the same function. Next thing we'll want to do is uh, make sure our switch is off and we're going to plug this into a grounded uh, power source. And then we want to locate our two isolation valves. Um, one is on our pre-filter. This will come shipped with a pre-filter already installed. And there's a special key you use to, uh, to change filters. But we want to make sure that this valve is open so we can get flow through our filter. And then we want to make sure the drain valve on the back side of our RO system is closed. We want to make sure that's closed. Otherwise, it'll just start pumping out when we, when we turn the system on. So get that stuff hooked up and then we'll move on to uh, how to set our upper dials so that we can start concentrating sap. Next we're going to locate our two discharge ports. Uh, one is our permeate water, our pure water, which is in the center. And we're going to insert that. And our concentrate outlet port, which is going to be our concentrated sap. And we're, for this... Uh, for this, we're just going to cycle it back into the same bucket of water so I can show you how this works. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn our pump on using the switch on the electrical outlet. <coughs> and you'll notice that pump changed, uh, it changed pitch a little as soon as the water got, got uh, drawn into it. So you're going to want to notice that and make sure that, uh, you know, that, that we have stuff cycling through the system. We're going to open our concentrate pour it all the way so there's no restriction. We want to make sure our needle valve is fully closed, our recirculation needle valve is fully closed. So the, what happens here is this is how we adjust the back pressure through the membrane which allows us to push water through to the permeate side and we can start extracting water from our sap. So really this is the only valve we need to worry about right now. And what we want to do is just set this valve until we get uh, equal flow across both hoses. That means we're doing a 50-50 pass and we're moving exactly half the water from our sap. So we're going to slowly dial this down. And you'll see that the flow here is decreasing. And I have a pressure gauge on this model, which is extremely helpful. So my pressure right now is reading 40 PSI. I'm going to bring that up to about 80. Now we're using water today. And when you start processing the actual sap, the pressures are going to be a lot higher. So keep that in mind. The reason is they have sugar in them. So the osmotic pressure of the solution is much higher. But we're going to set it uh, here about 60. And now I'm getting a pretty decent amount of permeate out of this out of this system. So I'm getting concentrate and permeate. Now what you want to do is when you're processing sap, you're going to keep dialing this down until you get equal flow across both hoses. 
and you want to maintain a pressure of 200 PSI or less. So as you dial this down, what you're going to find is that in order to get a 50-50 pass, the pressure is going to want to go above 200 PSI. So what you're going to do is slowly open the recirculation needle valve to maintain a pressure of 200 PSI. As you dial the concentrate valve down more, the pressure will go up. You'll again open your recirculation needle valve to maintain that 200 PSI pressure. What this recirculation needle valve is going to allow you to do is it's going to allow you to run your permeate water at 60 or 70 percent flow and your concentrate at 30 to 40 percent flow if you desire and get a single pass higher than 4 percent sugar, say 6 percent or so, by just adjusting your pressure on the recirculation valve. So normally, normally what would happen is if I were to continue to concentrate more and decrease my concentrate flow, I would get more permeate water but my pressure would spike and there would be no way to regulate that. So with the recirculation valve, this system allows you to set the water flow faster than the concentrate flow, but still regulate your pressure. Because what's basically happening is we're getting flow from our concentrate valve, but excess is being flown back, uh, being sent back through the inlet side of the pump so that we can regulate pressure. We have another path for that concentrate to go. So in a sense, you can use this as a single valve, uh, simple operation. If you don't want to mess with the recirculation needle valve and you just want to do a single pass, I would recommend just close your recirculation valve off and just set your pressure to 200 PSI and let the system do what it does. It'll pull X amount of water an hour and you won't have to mess around with two valves. If you really want to match your evaporation rate, like let's say you really want to make uh, 15 gallons of concentrate per hour, this system will allow you to set your concentrate flow to 15 gallons per hour and still and get a much higher BRICS concentration on a single, on a single pass by regulating your overall pressure with the, constant, with the recirculation needle valve. So that's how this system works, it's very simple. When you're all done, uh, you know, just shut it off and uh, unplug it and uh, go through and follow the flush procedures that are outlined in the, in the, in the back of our manual. Uh, as always, let us know if you have any questions, sales at therobucket.com. Uh, we're always here to help and if you have any suggestions for a future video, you know, feel free to reach out to us and I'd be happy to I'd be happy to put one together for you. Thank you.